I didn't know she'd been coming since she was six. I knew she'd been coming and was a Fever fan. Um, l let me be clear about Grace Berger. We drafted Grace Berger because she's an exceptional player that can play three positions that's a fantastic person off the court and just happens to be down the road. Whoa! That all kind of came together. So I, I don't want you to think that, that we took her because she lives in Bloomington or that I'm an IU fan, you know. We took her because she's such a great player, and we're excited about her versatility. She can play the one, she can play the two, she can play the three, and uh, she's just tough. She's, she's, she's just a competitor. Cri she's Christie's kind of player. Tony, go ahead. Uh, I think always we're looking to play defense. I mean, both Lynn and I both believe, you know, defense wins championships. Um, you got to have that, that aspect of the game. That's going to be from day one when they walk in. We're going to start playing some defense as they walk in the door, I think. But, you know, these guys, like Lynn said, they're all, there's versatility in all of our draft picks. And that, that's what's so exciting about, about these guys. I mean, they can play several different positions. You know, in this league, you play so many games. And, you know, you're going to have injuries throughout the season. And when you have somebody that can just move over and play a different position. So that was really important in when we were looking at these different draft picks. I wouldn't call it an easy choice. I would say it was an obvious choice. Once we did our homework, uh, once we did our research, talked to our coaches, um, th there was no one, in my opinion, uh, that was in her league as far as considering for the first pick. Um, just everything about her we liked um, and uh, on the court, off the court. Defense, offense, you know, she, I think, will thrive in the WNBA because we have the three-second defensive rule mm -hmm. that you don't have in college. So she has the potential to have a double-double every night. Got a question on Zoom here first. Uh, Zion Brown, go ahead. Yeah, this one uh, is for Lynn. Lynn, you've talked about just – how you feel like this is a team that can really compete for playoff contention this year? How do you think the players you drafted tonight get you closer to that? Well, I, I know we have the potential to score more points because of Boston, Berger, um, Mike Sale uh, immediately. I mean, it was really hard for us to pass. I know it looked like we got a little greedy taking both Berger and Mike Sale, you know, two top guards from the Big Ten, but they can both score. You know, and they also can can um, make other people better on the court. You know, you got to come out and guard Mike Sale. You you know you you got to guard Berger, and so we we just got better, I think, on both ends of the floor uh, with the draft picks that we got. Uh, for both of you, kind of, you know, you got to cut down some roster spots eventually, and you know that's always a tough part of this process. What is your message to the players walking through the door when it comes to you know talking about? competing in training camp. I, I think that's the word right there. I think the minute, you know, that you're paying attention and watching this draft, you see that at every position there's several for that each, you know, the, those spots. So, you know, it's going to be you're going to earn your spot. Um, we want to take the best available player that is going to get out and do exactly what we want to do. That's play defense. Um, and also, you know, culture is really big for us. So that's a, that's an important piece as well for them to fit into what we're trying to do here. Yeah, I was excited um, thinking about pairing some of the players that we took tonight with Kelsey Mitchell and with uh, Nalissa Smith, uh, Victoria Vivians, Erica Wheeler, and thinking, wow, I really believe, sincerely believe that we got better tonight with, with the talent that we have. Hey, training camp should be competitive. You know, especially in a, in a uh, reload mode that we're in, you know, I want them fighting for positions, um, and you know, and I want them to come back hungry, and you know, and uh, you know, starving for that position. So I think I think we set that tone tonight. Mm -hmm. Go up in the front row here. Yeah, I'm Katie Moore with IUPUI Sports Capital Journalism. Aaliyah's going to join her former teammate Dustin, and the last time they played together was against UConn in the 2017 Conference National Championship. And for both of you, how are you looking forward to their chemistry on this team, especially in high stakes situations like championship games? 
Yeah, I mean, we, we now have the, um, Destiny Henderson, Aaliyah Boston, and then in the, with the 25th pick, we took Victoria, Victoria Saxton, um, who was part of that championship team, too. So there's three champions right there. And then we took Ladasia Williams from LSU. There's another champion. So w we brought in people that know how to win championships. Uh, but I think those three, Destiny and Aaliyah and, and Vic Victoria, will set a tone about what it does take to be a champion. And so I, I like the fact that they're going to be reunited here. Uh, I, you know, they're all great people. And a lot of people may wonder why I picked Saxon. I had her in camp when I coached at, at Purdue, and she was in high school. So I've known her and followed her. Great person. Alexa, go ahead. Talk about picturing um, some of these younger girls with Kelsey and Victoria and all of them. How do you kind of, this question to both of you, how do you see the balance of youth and then the veterans on this team and how everybody kind of yeah, I, I think um, I've talked a lot with Kelsey um, dear, since I've gotten the job and, you know, just want to put a lot of emphasis on her on, you know, what is needed as a, as a leader on this team. You know, I was here when we drafted her and she was a rookie and, you know, she talks about how hard that year was as a rookie and we talked the other day and she's like, I, Coach, I just want to make sure that people have a great experience. And so I think she's going to take that, that role and just make sure that, you know, these guys that are coming in, she's going to help them, teach them, show them what that looks like to be a pro. Erica Wheeler is going to do another, uh, be there as well, you know, to help her with that. So I think we've just got some great people in place now that um, can show these young players what it looks like to be a pro. Brian, go ahead. I see versatility. I, yeah. I'm not sure what coach sees. Versatility, hollow action. Liz can step out. Boston can play in the paint. She can step out. It just gives us a, so many options. Go to another one on Zoom. Uh, Thomas Costello, go ahead. Uh, thanks a lot. Thomas Costello here with uh, Langer and Holy Land in Columbus, Ohio. You talked about pairing players together, but you're bringing in uh, Grace and Taylor who have battled really hard over the last few years against each other. How much does that kind of help bringing them into the camp? And then also you talked about Kelsey Mitchell. Has she said anything maybe about Taylor Mike? So I know that they often have some moments together, not just at the draft, but throughout the season. Yeah, so we've got a Hoosier and two Buckeyes. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, I, I, think, I think you're right. I think Grace and, and Taylor have a lot of respect for each other. Uh, they're they're both guards, but they're different. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're different kind of guards. I don't know anybody that shoots the ball faster off the pass uh, than, than Taylor Mikesell, and and so she's going to be very challenging uh, to to defend. And then and then you've got Grace that that's a multi-purpose three per, uh, three position player. At six uh, foot. At six foot, and that's just got a fantastic physical body, and so. They're similar, but they're different. You know, they're not, they're not clones. I think they complement each other. Uh, Cheryl Coward. Hi, uh, this is for uh, either person. Um, when you look across the league and you look at the, think about the future of the league, it's like Indiana now has an embarrassment of riches when it comes to the youth and the next generation of the league. Do you feel that Indiana has an advantage that way as far as ushering in the next generation of stars. Well, we definitely have an infusion of youth. There's not <laughs> any doubt about that. And and I think, you know, that that's another reason for us to be a little patient uh, as they grow up. You know, our rookies, five rookies last year will come back as sophomores or second year players, whatever, however you want to call them. And then here comes another group. But these two years, this is what that's all about is laying that foundation for the future. You know, next year it'll become more normal with one pick in the first round, one pick in the second round, like the other, most of the other teams did. And so we'll just kind of build on these two, these two classes. Uh, but we've got to give them time to grow up. You know, you've got to have a good balance uh, of youth and experience. And I think that's the reason why we picked up Erica Wheeler and Christy Taylor. Nice. Uh, we re-signed uh, Tori Vivians, and, and, and then we had have Kelsey Messer. So we're starting to have a good blend of veterans um, and young players. And, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of young talent. We, there may be some trades down the road here. You know, we can't keep them all. Tony, go ahead. Thank you. Well, uh, 
1, 7, 13, 17, and 25. Um, and I, 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 I think somebody told me some of those numbers are prime numbers, which are lucky. So m maybe that's why we got some of the players that we want. And I don't know anything about that. But you know, when somebody looked at our numbers, they said, oh, we got prime numbers. I'm like, really? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I, think we're, I think we're on the right path to do what we want to do um, to get this team back on track. And I, I know our fans are excited. I know everybody seems to be uh, at Pacer Sports and Entertainment really – all in uh, for uh, us having the, the number one pick and then <clears throat> bringing in some more top players. We're back in the arena in our gorgeous facility. So there's a lot of good things going on now. With Aaliyah, was it a final decision made today that she'd be who you go with number one, or was there a moment of things scouting with her that you said, this is who you want to go with, you know? Yeah, I, you know, she was, I'm not saying she was an easy choice, but when you put her full package together, it just made for something, you know, for what we need uh, going forward. I mean, she's, uh, we, we talk defense. I mean, she's a defensive stopper. She's going to be grounded back there. And, um, but also her offense. I mean, this will be the first time that she will play with a three second rule. So you're going to see a whole different um, offensive game from Aaliyah Boston. Um, but for her, just the, the person and the, and the, that she's going to be for us and our culture, I think that's going to be huge for us. I mean, that's like she has all the intangibles. Brian, go ahead. I had a similar question with Grace Berger. Was there a point this season when she kind of emerged or established herself as sort of like a bona fide first round draft pick, that, that type of player that was on the radar? Um, I think the night we went down to Bloomington and watched the game between, well, let's see, we went twice. twice yeah. We went to watch them play Maryland, which was a very exciting game with Diamond Miller, and then we went back and watched them play Iowa against uh, Caitlin Clark. And I think both of those uh, visits down there in person, and we're right on the court. I mean, mm. right on the court. I think they were trying to give you a five. Uh, that I one thought time. Diamond Miller was going <laughs> to high five me. Yeah. Um, so we, we we were up close watching them play, and um, it just reinforced to us, I think, what a, an exceptional player Grace is, and how she ran her team, and how her her ability to uh, make everybody better, you know. Um, so that, seeing her in person in those two games, and those were big games, mm -hmm. um, w was was major for us. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No? Okay. Oh, go for it. Uh, with South Carolina, is there something about that program that prepares their players to play at the next level? I mean, yeah, obviously South Carolina. Yeah, I think it's, it's called Dawn Staley. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that might be a factor. Uh, she's one of our elite coaches. Uh, she is former Olympic coach, and she's just done a fantastic job there. Uh, her players get better. You know, they come in and they get better. And, and the other thing that Dawn really emphasizes is, is off the court character. You know that that's why when when we when we uh, draft a, a a player that's played for Dawn, we, we know that we're getting good stuff on the court and off the court too. Mm -hmm. So kudos to Dawn. <laughs>